Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 13th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. We woke up this morning to BirdCast saying that over 1 million birds had migrated over Monroe County last night, so Kim and I met at 5.30 a.m. out at the Braddock Bay West Spit with high expectations. Mama and Papa Canada Goose brought some goslings over pretty close to us, so they were really cute to see first thing in the morning. Here we have a small sandpiper, and the bill is slightly decurved and pointy at the tip. The legs, although in this photo it doesn't show up real well, the legs were not black, but rather they were a yellowish green, making this a least sandpiper. Here's the same least sandpiper in flight. Again, notice the shape of that bill, and notice that they have very little white to the top side of the wings. And here's the underside of the same bird, and the main confusion species would be semi-palmated sandpiper, but those would be slightly larger with black legs and more of a straight, blunt-tipped bill. Here's a green heron, and this one was kind of funny because it was flying into the wind and not making very much progress at all. Here's a belted kingfisher, and we know this is a female because of the brown here on the underside. We are still seeing some great blue herons migrating as well. Maybe there's someone watching this video who can help us out. We had this mouth sticking up out of the water, and we got a couple of photos of it. I'll scroll through them, and I assume that this is some kind of fish, but maybe someone knows what exactly it was doing swimming with its mouth sticking up out of the water like this. We watched it for several minutes, and it seemed to stay like this the entire time, and it seemed to be making some progress. At least it was moving through the water and occasionally opening and closing the mouth, so I think it was alive. We saw some decent sized groups of migrating blue jays with more than 500 for the morning. And it really cleared up and became a nice sunny morning for a few hours at least. Here's a warbler that Kim and I had really been hoping to get a good look at and this one certainly posed for us nicely. Here we have a warbler that's mostly yellow and has a black cap. This is a Wilson's warbler. And you didn't even need binoculars to identify this bird with the red head and then black and a big white patch. This is a red-headed woodpecker. Some of our birding friends were just up the path from us and found a morning warbler that was hiding in this bush right here. And I didn't get any photos, but actually after we had briefly seen it here, we walked further up the path and it did briefly pop out in the open for us. So we got pretty good binocular views, but just a very brief look and no photos. Here's a breeding plumage common loon migrating north. We had a great morning at the West Spit with a total of 84 species. While we were at the West Spit, some rain moved in, so we were actually able to stay over there a little bit longer, eventually wandering over to Braddock Bay Park in time to start the hawk watch at 10 a.m., but for the first little while, it remained a bit gloomy and rainy. The first raptor of the day was this adult peregrine falcon as I was moving things from my car to the platform. We had a nice moderate southerly wind throughout the morning and that was great for migrating sharp-shinned hawks such as this juvenile and we ended up with around 75 sharp-shinned hawks today so uh, it's a really good day compared to recent numbers but much less than we were seeing a few weeks ago. Here we have a small swallow with a raspy call. It's brown on top, mostly white underneath with a brown breastband. This is a bank swallow. Here's a bird that I spotted when it was way across the bay over the west spit and we watched it come across the bay towards us and it ended up giving us a really nice look. This is a pileated woodpecker. And we know it's a male because of the red mustache. We had some nice looks at bobolinks again today with at least nine of them down in the grass. We had a flyover flock of 24 American pipits. Note the white eye ring, a little bit of markings to the upper breast and white outer tail feathers. Here we have some birds that are tan underneath with some black on the face and a yellow tip to the tail. These are cedar wax wings. Here's a small buteo with somewhat pointed wings. We see some brown markings to the upper breast and a tail with narrow bands. This is a juvenile broad-winged hawk and it seems like we're finally getting more juveniles than we are adult broad-winged hawks. Here we have a bald eagle that's an older immature. It's getting really close to the full adult plumage, but we still see some black here in the head and tail and some white throughout the underside. By midday, it was really starting to clear up. We got a lot of sunshine. The winds continued to be out of the south, eventually shifting more towards the southwest, and it became quite warm in the afternoon with temperatures into the low 70s. Along with those southerly winds and sunny skies, we got lots of broad-winged hawks, 
We had more than 800 of them for the day, which is the most we've had since May 1st. And in this photo, we can see it's a mix of adults, such as this one right here in the middle, where we can see the dark tail with the wide white tail band and juveniles such as this one over here um, where we see more thin banding to the tail and also a lot of the juveniles that we see are molting their inner primary feathers. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded wingtips so we should be thinking accipiter. This one has a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are the same length and a small head with sort of a bug-eyed look. Look how big the eyeball looks compared to the smaller head. So this is a sharp shinned hawk and we see some vertical brown streaking making this a juvenile. Although interestingly, this type of teardrop patterning is more typical of what we see on juvenile Cooper's hawks. And a lot of the juvenile sharp shinned hawks have kind of a thicker, messier looking streaking to them. So uh, we do see some that are more Cooper's hawk-esque in this way. So you have to be a little bit careful just because you see this sort of teardrop streaking doesn't mean that it's necessarily a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Some of the Sharpies have this same kind of streaking. So we have to rely on the other field marks as well. We had three more peregrine falcons in quick succession, bringing the total to four for the day, which is the highest that we've had so far for any day this season. Here we have a large dark raptor with a large head. We see a lot of splotchy white throughout the underside, especially here in the wing pit area. This is an immature bald eagle. To my eye, this looks like one that would have been born last summer. And we can see that it's beginning to molt. So some of these inner primary feathers are starting to grow in and also a few of the tail feathers. You can see they're really short right now as they're just growing in. Compare that to this bald eagle, which is also a juvenile, but this is what we would call a southern juvenile bald eagle, meaning this is one that was born south of us over the winter. So this one's in much fresher plumage. We see a completely even trailing edge to the wings, very little feather wear overall, still a really dark head and underside of the body, just really clean and fresh looking. Here's another sharp shinned hawk. This one has a little bit of a messier streaking on the underside and the compactness of this bird's a little exaggerated just because of the angle of the photo. Here's another hawk with a long tail but thinner, more pointed wings and an owl-like facial disc. This is a juvenile northern harrier. We had a visitor today from out of state who spent most of the day with us and I had actually met him last fall down at the Ashland Hawk Watch in Delaware. And just as he was leaving today, someone spotted this golden eagle so we had to yell down to him and he came back up and got to see this bird. It's not the closest photo ever, but looking at the overall shape, I mean, we see a large dark raptor and we see that the head is very small here on the left compared to the tail on the right. And we can also see some small white patches in the wings and it had a white tail base as well. By around three o'clock, it had clouded over again and rain was moving in that shut the countdown early. From the Hawk Watch today, we had 61 species. A few of us decided to go over to the firehouse woods where a lot of warblers were seen this morning and when we first got there the activity was pretty good but then the rain started to pick up and the activity really died down. But the highlight was this resting common nighthawk which you can see here. It really blends in and is camouflaged with the branch um, but the person had found this earlier in the day and knew exactly where it was and was able to show it to us so that was my first common nighthawk of the year. At the firehouse woods we had 26 species. Altogether today we had 108 species. I picked up four new species for the season today which were morning warbler, black pole warbler, Wilson's warbler, and common nighthawk. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 96 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 41 bald eagles, 18 northern harriers, 74 sharp shinned hawks, 807 broad winged hawks, 14 red-tailed hawks, one golden eagle, one merlin, and four peregrine falcons for a total of 1,058 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 8,155 and the season total to 60,758. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking partly cloudy, then occasional showers with a high in the upper 60s. Winds will be north-northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Maybe a little bit of activity in the morning, but I would expect light migration overall. For Wednesday, we're looking cloudy with occasional rain showers and a high in the low 60s. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Again, expect light migration. 
And for Thursday, it's looking cloudy early with partial sunshine late in the high in the mid 60s. Winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Expect light migration. All right, overall, a great day of birding with a really good variety at the West Spit in the morning, then sort of a condensed hawk watch with rain on either end and a big hawk flight in the middle, and then getting to finish up in the rain over at the Firehouse Woods. Migration is looking good again tonight, so perhaps we'll get another influx of songbirds for the morning. And the hawk watch looks like it'll be hit or miss tomorrow, maybe a little activity in the morning when the winds are more favorable and there's a bit of sunshine, but then the winds are going to shift less favorable. So it's looking like a few slower days coming up at the hawk watch, but some really good days for warblers and we're still in peak migration time and definitely in the period where a lot of rare birds have the possibility of showing up. So it's definitely worth getting out in the morning and seeing what you're able to find. Hope to see you out soon in the field or on the platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.